I always wear slippers. Are we? All right. And we're back with another episode. And I'm back. I feel like I haven't done it in so long, just skipping one week. Yeah. But I, I feel the same way. I loved uh, you guys that you did an episode. It was perfect because when I was like cutting weight, that was one of my cardio sessions was listening to it. And it was so cute. I almost cried. Why? I don't know. Just like, I don't know. You talking about like how proud you are of me and stuff. And it was like super sweet. I almost started crying. Well, you did amazing. Thank you. Another win. Another one. Another one. Mm-hmm. Um, what a week, huh? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of crazy like how much like so much happens in like a span of like 48 hours. Right. It's kind of crazy. And then like today is our first full day home. And it's kind of just like, oh, all right. Because yeah, yesterday is just a travel day. Yeah. And we stayed one extra day in Vegas. We'll talk about that. But um, let's start with uh, this was the first time that I ever did like the full weight cut with you. Yeah, I didn't really I don't realize usually that. come out until Friday, mm-hmm. but I was able to um, come a day or two earlier this time. So I went and uh, I was there. I got in what? Thursday morning. Yeah. So then you started the cut Thursday night. Yeah. Like the uh, the majority. Yeah. The main part of it. That that was a different experience for me mm-hmm. because Why? no, just like, I mean, I knew, I knew how difficult it is and I know what you go through, but to be there firsthand and see it, it's like super impressive, but like for people to like wrap their head around it, like, did you guys give the actual numbers? Yeah, I don't yeah. care. So like Thursday night, you're like 11 pounds over. Uh, it, was, it was nine and a half pounds. Well, in, Thursday morning, it was 11, 11 yeah, pounds. Yeah, yeah. It was nine and a half pounds like in 15 hours, basically. Right. So you started cutting at like 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. And then we went straight through till about 10.30. Yeah. It was like four and a half hours. Mm. It's like an hour work and then just sauna, laying down, sauna, Mm -hmm. right? And you lost seven pounds. Yeah. In about four hours, three and a half hours. Yeah, I think think it was like three and a half. For some reason, three and a half sounds a lot better than four. Yeah. But um, the thing, that's just how it always is for me. Like, I know from experience that like for me cutting weight on the last couple of days or like that last night is I'm like, okay, it's. I mean, obviously it's hard, but it's not like I know I can do it. The only thing is it just takes me a long time to do it. So if a guy has to lose seven pounds, they might do that in an hour and a half where it'll take me three and a half hours. That's the craziest part for me is how long it takes you because I've never seen that. I've never seen someone cut weight for that long. Mm -hmm. Usually it's like two hours at the absolute most, but you're doing it for like three and a half, four hours and you drop the seven pounds. Then we get back to the hotel 10 30 11 at night with the attention of all right i'm just gonna lay down then wake up at 6 a.m to start cutting again and you have till 11 a.m to make that weight so you floated one pound and you had two to go in the morning yeah so then we get back to the sauna Mm -hmm. and that those two pounds took you three hours yeah legit three hours yeah Mm mm-hmm like that it's weird because it doesn't it goes kind of fast like it doesn't feel like on thursday night and that like when it was like three and a half hours like to me it felt like i worked out for an hour and then did like sauna for like an hour but, but it was three and a half hours it just it doesn't i don't know it sounds i feel like that sounds worse than what it is it it's i don't know if it's a testament of your, like your mental toughness or you're just you know, just putting on like a poker face, but you don't grimace, you don't complain, you don't say a word. It's just a matter of you just putting in the time. Mm-hmm. It's just like a time commitment more than a, it doesn't yeah. feel like you're suffering. No. Even though you probably are. I mean, listen, it sucks. It's not like I'm like having fun, but I'm not like. But the time. The thought of like, I'm not crying. I'm not like, oh my God, oh, like any of that. Cause I think if you have the energy to do that, I think the big part of it is just trying to like stay calm and just kind of like you go into it knowing like, okay, this is going to, we're going to be here for a while 
and that's just what it is and this is what we have to do and I've, I've done it before so I know I can do it so it's just like I said it's just a matter of time it's funny because so many people are like oh this is the worst part the sports got to get rid of weight cutting this I can't believe they're still doing this this is so barbaric this is so unhealthy and I don't know if it's because like you've gotten this way of thinking because of me or have you already thought that but it seems that you embrace the weight cut now and almost think of it like because i always think of it as that's one of your advantages yeah you're technical you're long you have good cardio and you're really good at cutting weight and putting the weight back on and that in and of itself is a skill and people don't quantify that people quantify someone's right hand as power they have good double legs tricky jujitsu but nobody says like this person's amazing at cutting weight and puts it on healthy and they're ready to compete but if you have the ability to do what you do i think it puts you at a tremendous advantage that in and of itself i'm like so thankful that you know you have that ability yeah I think that Do you agree with that? I agree with you. I think before sometimes I use and I don't know if it's maybe a little bit of influence from you or just maturing and like having more experience, but before I used to kind of like feel sorry for myself for like cutting weight, like when it came to that that the final week, I was like just the whole premise around it, like the whole camp, it's always like Ugh. I have to cut weight. Oh, it's like, poor me, poor me. But like, I don't know. And I also definitely do it better. So like during camp, I'm never feel like I'm hungry. I never feel like I always feel feel yeah. fueled. But, but that's part of it, too, is the ability to follow that scientific structured plan. Mm -hmm. That to me is a skill. Yeah. But I, I get what you're saying. I just think it's discipline because I don't think it's a skill if someone's telling you exactly what to eat and you just have to do it. To me, that's like. Well, that's like anything. Be like, oh, you could take the uh, the bar exam. Just study here. All the answers are in this book. Yeah. You still got to follow it. You gotta yeah, read, you know. I guess you're right. But um, but yeah, I don't know. And then I changed my mindset of being like, especially during fight week when I have to do it, stressing out about it. Well, one, I know. I've done it so many times, so it's never like, oh, am I going to make it? That thought never comes through my mind anymore. But instead of feeling sorry for myself, like, this sucks. Oh, I don't have energy. I don't feel good. I'm just like, I'm going to cut this weight. I'm like, and I'm, so I'm going to be big and I'm strong. I'm going to be so strong. And then the thing is, I also think this, I've started thinking about this a little bit the last two cuts, is if other girls are doing it in the UFC, I'm like, then why should I complain? Because I know I'm way tougher. I've seen other girls that I can tell cut a lot of weight, probably the same weight, same as me, if not more. And I've seen them break in fights. And I'm like, if they can, if these girls can do it, then there's no reason for me to complain because I know I'm way tougher than them. So that almost like motivates me to just like put on a straight face and get through it. Right. Because I'm not, I'm better than like, to me, I'm just mentally tougher than, all the other girls. So if they're making, if they're cutting that weight, I can't, I can't, not only can I just cut weight, I have to do it better than them. Right. And I know that I'm a, in the minority, the way I think about weight cutting and stuff, mm -hmm. but I just think of it like, cause everyone's like, well, it's so unhealthy, this and that. But if someone has like a really good chin and never gets dropped, someone would be like, Oh, he could take a punch. He's got such a good chin. It's such, he's such a, a, a strong jaw. Mm -hmm. Someone would like think of that as an attribute, but it's not a good thing. It's not healthy to get punched yeah. blush in the face and be able to withstand it and not get dropped. Yeah. So to say you have a good chin, I mean, that's not healthy either. Yeah. But to be good at losing weight, I, th I just, I don't know. I, I respect it so much that you're able to do it and I know how difficult it is, mm -hmm. but just being part of it for that day was, I mean, I know what you do, but seeing it firsthand is just crazy. It was just mm -hmm. so impressive. Kyle lost uh, 15 pounds. I lost 15 pounds. During the weight cut, which part of me wanted. Well, I didn't have one sip of water either because I was like, well, I have to sit with her. But I was like squirting sweat out. But I, 
I was pretty heavy because I traveled and stuff. So I checked my weight before and I was definitely heavy, but I lost 15 pounds. I was so annoyed. I was all cut up. Kyle was like, every, the, the first, um, in the morning when I had to lose two pounds. So it's me, Kyle, Sajara, and then uh, Charles, who works for the PI. He was helping me with my, with my cut as well. And I'm like laying there. And I open my eyes and all three of these people are like dripping sweat. And I was like, motherfucker. Like I was sweating, but like, you know, you're waiting for it to come and everyone else right away because they're like hydrated and stuff. They were <laughs> dripping sweat. And I was so, and I looked over Kyle's like pouring sweat. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. And I told you before, I was like, make sure you, I gave you a warning Thursday night. We were at the hotel before we left. I was like, Kyle, make sure you But eat. then when we got home, no, when no one ate anything. We yeah. all were shot and went to bed. But I told you, I was like, make sure you eat something before. You're like, oh, I'm good. I'm like, no, it's going to be a long night. Like, make sure, <laughs> make sure you eat something. And then I was like telling, I know the feeling like where coaches are like, I don't want to drink in front of her. But I was like, no, this is a well, long. I didn't have something in there. So yeah. I didn't want to like leave and go get yeah. something. Yeah. Because right? I was like. I know coaches like don't want to drink, but I'm like, no, like there's no point of all three of us being like dehydrated. Like make sure you like get some sips. In. Yeah. Well, I didn't. So we both lost the weight. And then, <laughs> and then uh, the next day you you're that day you weigh in, made the weight. And then the next step of the process is the hydrating mm -hmm. and refueling. Mm hmm. And people don't understand like that in and of itself is strategic as well. Yeah. And um, like you have a system that you follow. Explain that. That's I think it's interesting. Yeah. So the second you step off the scale, they provide you. Um, so I had like two shaker bottles of drinks and then like a gallon with all, and this all has stuff in it, like carb, like liquid carbohydrates, um, electrolytes, all that stuff, sodium. So they tell you, they give you one and they're like within 10 minutes of stepping off the scale, you finish that one, sip on it. And then the next 10 minutes you drink another one. And then within the next hour of that, you drink like kind of a full gallon, almost like a full gallon and all that. And then after, you know, so that you do that and then you slowly start introducing food. But you did that before we left the medicals. Mm -hmm. You drank the gallon, which is eight pounds and two about 20 ounce shakers. Mm -hmm. So you had a hundred you know where i mean what like 10 11 pounds in an, an hour yeah food. yeah and um that part like then you just kind of slowly just have fruit introduce it and then but actually this was the first time ever that i like didn't feel good after weigh-ins right. i was fine there and then when we got back to the hotel um we went to go out to eat to get breakfast same place we always do but that place sucks fuck that place yeah, fuck, we're not going there anymore. Every time we go, it's shitty service. Terrible. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> but anyway, we go there and I was like, I ordered like food like I normally do. And I like was like, damn, I don't know. I can't really eat this. And I was like, my stomach kind of is fucked up. And I, I had had like fruit and a couple things. Rice cake. And yeah. Egg. But I was like, I can't eat this. I was like. Well, my stomach was rocking. I was like never. So I'm like not saying anything because I didn't want to like get everyone. <laughs> so I didn't want to get you upset. Well, I was I didn't worried. Want you I to, could tell. I didn't want you to worry. So I was, I was definitely worried. I could tell. Yeah. It was like that awkward thing where everyone at the table is like not. They're like, no, that my stomach hurts. And I'm like, ah, it's not a big deal. And everyone's like not trying to make it a big deal. But they're everyone's like super scared. And then we went back to the hotel and I chilled for a while. And then I was like, oh, my stuff. Then it, it was a couple of hours and I was like, I really haven't eaten like a real meal. I was like, I know I'll be fine by tomorrow. But I was like, today's pretty shot. Like, I'm but not then when we finally went out, we went and we went to the uh, we, you wanted to look at the fountains, mm -hmm. just get out of the room. So we went to the Bellagio, the water show there. Yeah, I walked around. Walked around, then we walked through Italy, mm -hmm. and you got like a little bowl of pasta. And I think then once you got that down, I, I think know. it started settling in your stomach or something. Yeah, because I got that just to kind of get it and try to eat. And just simple, I, plain pasta. Yeah, and then I was surprised I was able to eat it. It still kind of hurt, but it was kind of struggle. And then later that night, I had uh, a shout out to Tyler, my nutritionist. He suggested pho, which was like 
perfect. Now, from now on, that's my go-to. It is after perfect because it's like rice noodles, which are a little lighter. Yeah. And then like the sodium and like it's almost like a bone broth. Yeah. Right? The warm, like the warm soup was like good on my stomach. And when I once I ate that, I was like, okay, cool. Like today was kind of bad, but I crushed a pasta and then a, like i got the phone i was like i'm just gonna have a little bit remember i was like will you eat some because i'm not gonna eat that much i like crushed a lot you of a little, it a little piece of cake too huh the little olive oil cake. <laughs> oh yeah i did have a little <laughs> piece of cake and really for some reason no matter how bad your stomach hurts you can always get a little treat in yeah um but yeah then i was totally that by the end of the night i was like oh i'm fine and then the morning it was it was totally good but, yeah then the morning you get up you do your morning workout um then me and you went and walked, got some food. And then we're just like chilling in the hotel, which is always fun. It mm -hmm. seems like you always get like a little giddy and I get a little giddy during that time. We just like <laughs> are like playing in the hotel. Yeah, we're just it like feels waiting. very relaxed then. Yeah. Then when you get to the arena, it's kind of like the new policy now that it's at the apex. But how fast from the time you get to the arena to the time you're in the octagon is an hour. Yeah, but from the time we leave the hotel till fight, it's two hours. So, yeah, with, that's including traveling from the hotel to there. Yeah. You it get, used to be like you'd sit there for like four hours. Yeah. Now you can request if you need more time. If you want to be there longer, they'll they'll take you over earlier. Okay. But they pretty much take you, you know, fight at one, you know, one fight at a time. So you're there and you're there. You know, there's never more than two people kind of warming up. Yeah. So we got there. I think there was four fights before you when we got there, mm -hmm. but we were warming up. And then uh, the only fight I watched, I wanted to watch um, Vivi Viviana um, and, and Andrea, Andrea Lee. Lee. And uh, when I watched that, Viviana looked so fucking good. She just looked amazing. Her takedowns, her toughness, she fucked Andrea Lee up like next level. And then I was like, Oh man, Caitlin's gonna fuck this girl up. Caitlin's mm -hmm. so badass because that Vivian is legit. Yeah, she's really she good. is like a beast. She really is. And you fucked her up because mm -hmm. nobody else is doing that to her. Yeah. So I always, whenever Caitlin fights a girl, I've become their like biggest fan. Mm -hmm. Like I root for them so much. Now I'm gonna be like all about Amanda Rebus because I want her to do good. The better yeah. she does, the better it makes you look. Right, you know? of course. I want Viviana to get all the way up to you know yeah to the top that's kind of like some people like i think i it's happened before like i like beat joanne calderwood and she was had a lot of hype on her and then like i felt like after i fought her she like she lost, lost every couple, fight yeah. after and i was like that sucks. all right well i think when i fought her she was a little better yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. kind of same with jessica i i uh, lost to Davis jessica kind I, of too. yeah I lost, a lot of people like i feel like they were good and then after you it, it, it happens it goes both ways but some but you people. want the person to excel. Yeah, after of course. Yeah. <laughs> and Viviana definitely excel excelled. I don't know if I'm saying her name right, but shout out to her. She looked amazing. Yeah. Um, but it was just like something like reassuring almost because it was like a couple of fights before you. And I was yeah. like, oh, Kaylin could fuck this girl up. She's definitely going to win. Yeah. So then we do the warm up. Everything's feeling like good, right? Yeah, I mean, I always feel good in the warm ups and stuff, but this time I felt like really, really good. But how I felt good in the warm up and how I thought, like how I felt during the warm up and how I was picturing the fight going wasn't how the fight went. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so I was like, dude, I feel so on point. I was like, if my hands get locked around her. Like, that's it. Like, my body lock felt good. I just felt like this whole camp, I felt like. It was going to be like I felt really confident in my grappling and my grappling. It was like the like the only, not the only thing, but like it saved you actually a couple of times. Yeah, but. it did. But um, but yeah, I don't know how I kind of and I never picture like I never have a specific game plan, but um, you know how I, the, I ended up like having to dig deep and get that win wasn't how I was picturing it, but I'm always prepared to do whatever. Right. If that makes sense. So, yeah, so the fight starts. I thought the first minute or so you looked amazing. You were like landing like ones and twos, mm -hmm. straight right hands. You had a good knee. Looked really, really good for the first like minute. Mm -hmm. And then she throws that headlock and it was kind of off like where you pummeled in 
she had you in against cage and you pummeled in right as you got double underhook she threw it like perfect timing yeah. she's a legit judo expert and it's just the way it is i mean i've drove but then she's just holding you there mm -hmm. like what was how's the how's so that going at first like the first thing that went on my mind is like are you fucking kidding me like i literally drilled like the throw headlock defense like for two months and i'm like anyone that did it it was like my defense was so good i was like i hope she goes for it because my defense is so good but the problem is is like i'm having my training partners and people do the headlock throws to me that aren't judo experts. Right. So I think that when I do it in training, it's against people that aren't good at doing that throw. The only Not other like person that. who has a super effective headlock, and I wish I would have thought of this, we should have worked a little bit with Chris Wade. Oh, Chris yeah, Wade yeah. does a lefty headlock just like that, and he does it against the highest level Fighters. Yes, he really does. Yeah, it's like one of those moves that you tell people not to do, but then some people don't do it and it works. So the I at first I was like, did this fucking bitch just get me with this headlock that I fucking like knew was coming, drilled it, and I was confident. So when she did it, I was like, oh my god, that's embarrassing. But I wasn't like, I don't know. Then when she's hold, I'm like, okay, she's just holding me. She's not doing anything. So I was like, sometimes in jujitsu, like everything's a little bit slower pace, so you like are okay. Even if you're in a bad position, you relax. You think, okay, this is what I got to do. I got to get out of here. But sometimes in MMA, everything's so like, da, 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 and then you get in a position and you're like, huh, huh, oh my God, I, I, I got to get out. I got to get out. But you still have to like calm down. So like you kind of have to take the intensity and speed off of like what you're doing when you're striking and wrestling. Then when you get to the ground, especially if you're in a bottom position, you want to one scramble out. But sometimes if you're totally stuck and you need to go to jujitsu mode, you need to calm down and what think what you feel like is so long really isn't that long. So like at first when I was there, I was like, all right, how the fuck is like, am I stuck here? This is like the dumbest position. She's not even doing anything right. But I was I was kind of stuck. I couldn't get my underhook. And I was kind of for a second. I started to panic because I was like, dude, is she just going to fucking st like stay here? And I'm like, she's going to she's going to win the round if she just she just holds me here, but she's not doing anything. But I'm like, can I really not get out? And then uh, I just kind of stayed calm. And then like once I got my underhook, I mean, it felt like I was there for a long time. But then when I rewatched it, I was like, oh, she held me down. And then she just held my head for didn't hurt didn't do anything. And then I just ended up doing a jujitsu sweep and got up. So what I saw. Is she throws that judo throw and then. From that moment on, it's not wrestling. It's not jujitsu. She's in a judo position. Mm -hmm. The way her hips were, she sat out and had her one hip down and the yeah. other hip up. Where in like wrestling or jujitsu, your knees are going to be on the mat like by your hips. And right. then that's where you get your, you know, your half guard sweeps and you're digging your underhooks. But she's doing a sit out with you can't do damage like that but you could hold and people don't really know this about judo they only think of it as like high amplitude throws but there's a pin in jujitsu and jujitsu or i mean judo they're a judo athlete is very good at just controlling because unlike wrestling wrestling a pin is like once your shoulder blades touch judo it's 30 seconds ah, so okay. they need to keep flat keep the person flat for 30 seconds like mm -hmm. that's an eternity yes so she's done that probably her whole life yeah and if you're not trying to advance position it's hard for you to implement your jujitsu right so that was like just sometimes like i was like can she i would like wanted her to try to start punching me because then she would like right. give or space even anything yeah yeah well, then once she kind of turned in towards me mm -hmm. into into side control, then I was able to go back and get like a jujitsu sweep, get my underhook. Yeah. So then you get back up to your feet. And then I think there was about a minute and a half left mm -hmm. or a minute. I think there was a minute 45 because I remember like frantically, you could still win this round. Mm -hmm. You could still win this round. I heard you saying that. Because you have to know that you can still win the round. Yes. Yeah. There's enough time that if you fucking dominate that last minute and a mm -hmm. half you're gonna win the round yeah and that's something that and i think i thought you did and i think that's something that i did but um you know i think my ability to kind of understand that well i listened to you guys saying it because i understand that but maybe in the moment if i didn't hear you guys say that um i might not have completely known that but that's definitely something where experience comes in 
Right. And I think experience from doing it and experience from watching fights. I always think, I think that, that's so valuable. Like too. watching fights helps me so much because then I realize, you know, I've seen fights Keep where score. that happens. You're keeping, keeping score. Keeping score the whole time. And it's like, you know, just because you got to take down. Well, I was dominating before and I was dominating after. And if you don't do anything with the takedown, but you have to really, you know, dominate the other areas because they do, right. uh, you know, a lot of judges do praise takedowns a lot. Right. So then in the corner after that, you seem pretty composed, but uh, we were emphasized that th that was a, a close round. Yeah, I know. You got to win. The, mm -hmm. the second round, I always think, is the most important round of the fight because you have to win that one. Mm -hmm. you, you, no matter you what. You can't. No matter what. If you lost the first, you know, mm -hmm. you, you don't want it to yeah. have to get a finish, mm -hmm. right? So... Then you start the second round. It was just like you ended the first round, but a little longer. It went about two minutes. Mm -hmm. Then she did the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. This time she held you for about a minute. Yeah. I don't really remember. I was able to like regain guard and then. Right. You, this time you got guard. Yeah. Yeah. Because like when she went to turn into me this the second time, I was aware of that because she did it in the first time. So I tried to like stay on the back, but I just kind of missed it a little bit. Um. And then I was like able to kind of walk a high guard up. I knew I wasn't going to, when I walked the high guard up, I knew I wasn't, I knew she was going to be able to pull her elbow out. I didn't have like a good lock mm -hmm. on it, but I was like, all right, let me Still do jujitsu. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let me just do that. And then just, uh, eventually just like kicking off and then giving up my back a little bit just to get to the cage, which is something that I wouldn't have done. I would say like a couple months ago, I've gotten a lot more confident in scrambling up right. where before oh, you gave up your back. That's I gave up my yeah. back to stand up because I knew she would just jump right, mm -hmm. try to jump right on my back. And that would give me the opportunity to stand up rather than like sometimes just being on your back and just kicking the person to stand up. It's kind of hard. You have no momentum. I always like giving up the back. And yeah. Up. So I knew then once I did that and I was like, Oh, she's going to jump right on my back and then I'm going to be able to, I was close to the cage to stand up and then get her back to the cage. Yeah. Yeah. Once we were like on the cage and like any type of like, she just she didn't she had the like quickness of the throw but once but other than that she didn't feel strong like once we were like i was able to get my underhook so easy right. and turn and like she wasn't like that skilled or i felt like i was a little bit ahead of her when it came to that stuff but so then the second half of that round was i thought where you landed some of your biggest shots mm -hmm. like some really good one twos and they, even the announcers commented on that. Oh, that was the biggest punch of the fight and so on. Mm -hmm. And then the last like 15 seconds, it was like an extra sprint and you got like a body lock then finished with in on a double. And I was like, all right, she won that round. For yeah. Sure. You got to end the round. You got to win the round. Yeah. You won that round. Then the third. You made the adjustment of no more digging in the underhooks. Yes. Just because that's exactly what she was waiting for. She waited for you to get two underhooks and she threw the headlock. Then you made the adjustment of just pivoting your feet. Yeah. And I then engage. it changed the fight. Yeah. No more. It wasn't a close fight. Before I was like, you know, she would push me against the cage and I was like, oh, I'm stronger than her. And like, I wasn't expecting her to do the headlock from there. I was expecting her to do it more from the middle or defensively if I was pushing her against the cage. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't really expecting there. So then I made the adjustment in the third round. So anytime she came up, instead of going underhooks and trying to pull her up and turn her, I just almost like a Muay Thai clinch turned to the side and then pivot, your feet. pivot my feet and just jab on the way out. And mm -hmm. it was like, OK, now I'm like, she's never going to do it again. That changed everything. Yeah. So being able to kind of be aware of that and like make that adjustment, I think, is something like I said, I was veteran. Able, yeah, I don't I wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, I don't think like maybe like a year or two ago. The, your fight IQ, right? Yeah, like, that's big. Yeah. And being able to not get frustrated with it mm -hmm. and like still win you know because sometimes especially when it's like a move that like the headlock like i said it was super frustrating and i could feel myself like almost i knew the moment that like where if i would have broke i would have broke it was probably like the second a little bit the first throw it was frustrating but especially the second one you know because then you can be like oh well now she's winning this round and but like you just gotta keep going and stuff and i think that like winning every second you can not just like right because um, sometimes it's easy to be like oh i got taken out i'm on the bottom i'm not taking damage and i'm fucking tired so like all right i lost this round i'm gonna just not take damage i'm not taking damage let me just wait till the next one i'm gonna try to go even can't harder this can't do that 
So what happens if you slip and they get on top of you? You got to win that. every every second you every can. Every second you can. So then you're dominating the fight. I thought there's about a minute and a half left. She does her first real level change. She shot a, a double leg and then she did like a heel trip with mm-hmm. her back leg. And it was perfect. It yeah. Was a really, really good shot. Mm-hmm. But what won you the fight, I really think if she would have got that and finished on top and controlled you that last minute, they probably would have given her that round just because, oh, she got to take down every round. You know? Yeah, yeah. But the second your hips hit, you pushed her down your legs, got right up to your feet, mm-hmm. and it was like not a takedown, you know? Yeah. Like, or, you know, one second of control mm-hmm. time. And that just and that's probably that's, tiring for her. Then there was like a minute 20 left, and that's when you guys just went berserk. <laughs> like she was screaming, and you're just... I was like, why are you screaming? Like, she was, like, screaming when she wasn't even, like, throwing. Yeah, for about a minute. Yeah. That's a long time. And I'm like, ugh, this is so annoying because she's, like, screaming and, like, making all those noises. I'm like, but, like, it's so annoying because that does nothing. But, like. Well, probably got you the 50K. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Maybe, maybe. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Probably got you the fight But of the I'm night. just like, ugh, why are you doing this? Like, it's so unnecessary. <laughs> yeah. But, Yeah. But um, so then it goes the judges scorecards. And how did you feel? I mean, to be honest, I wasn't like, I don't know. I just kind of like once the fight was over, I was like pretty tired. I, mm. I, I honestly like didn't even like. I couldn't even like comprehend listening to the judges right. decision. I was just like, I like looked up and I saw like the split thing. So I'm like, OK, it's a split decision. And then I was just like. I can't hear. I just mm. heard my name, then her name, then my name. I was like, it was her, her name, then your name, then uh, your name. See, I don't even know. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I had some thoughts before going into it, and that was like the type of fight where if you're judging it as a fight, like just a fist fight, it was very obvious that you won the fight. Mm-hmm. But if you're judging it as a sport, then it gets tricky. Mm-hmm. Do, could do someone maybe like control time? Someone might, you know, have more thought of the takedown. So if you're judging it as a sport, it was a li- I was a little nervous. Yeah. But in terms of a fight, like if you told like a friend who's never watched MMA before, here, who won this fight? Everyone would say that you did. Right. Because you punched her in the face more. Mm-hmm. Right. So you won the fight. But the game, the contest, the sport, that's where there was some like uncertainty. Yeah. Like, I mean, I felt I felt that when, you know, I know she got the the two throws, but when she was down, I feel like she was almost battling like me taking her back and her trying to get on top yes, for a lot yes. of the time. So I'm like, OK, she's threw- almost like a neutral. position. Yeah. So she threw me down, but then didn't really do anything with it. But I feel like in MMA, they. I have to sneeze. Oh my god. Okay. So I feel like in MMA they like and a throw like looks like, ooh, wow, yes. that looks you know what I mean? Yes. So I wasn't sure, but I was happy. Yeah. It's funny though, because like I, I the way I was thinking of her afterward, I and I talked to Gregor about it. And um because this is like a wrestling term, like an industry term in wrestling. Oh, he's a gimmick wrestler. Mm-hmm. And I'll give you an example. In 2008, at the Olympic trials, there was uh, Mo Lawal, King Mo. Mm -hmm. He was ranked like number one in the world. He was like a returning world team member. He was winning all the international tournaments. He was a shoe-in to be on the Olympic team. Mm -hmm. And he made it to the finals, and he wrestled against uh, a wrestler from Michigan named Andy Rovat. And Andy Rovat was like a good wrestler, very solid, but not even close to Mo Lawal, in my opinion. Not even close. Like I was like, oh, Mo's going to just kill him. But Andy Rovet is a gimmick wrestler, and he has what's called a chest lock, where the guy shoots a double leg on you, and you lock around the chest, and it's just a freestyle move. Yeah. You just expose their back. Even you end up taken down a lot of the times, but you score three, he scored two. Okay. So it's two out of three to be on the team, and Andy Rovet beat him two in a row mm-hmm. with just that tr- just tricky, seven. stupid chest mm-hmm. lock. But he's a gimmick wrestler. And if like, like anyone no else does way. it to him, it doesn't work. But yeah, yeah, there's no way that he's a better wrestler. Yeah, no way. Yeah. But a gimmick wrestler, a specialist, if they only have to beat you that one time, is mm-hmm. super difficult. Like someone who's a much more well-rounded fighter is a much easier matchup for you. Right. I right. think a specialist 
is super dangerous. Yeah. You know, so mm-hmm. it was just a tremendous win because of, you know, yeah, that aspect. Yeah. Then, um, so we get back. Zane, what did you think of the fight? Oh, yeah, Zane. What did you think? What did I think when I was watching it? Yeah. yeah. That was pretty. We did it. Just did a pretty in-depth analysis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this fight wasn't like as nerve wracking for me to watch as compared to your first fight. Cause I feel like, like it's like the first time I'm ever watching you fight. Yeah. Live. Now you have more experience mm-hmm. yeah. watching me. Fight. And like, I have like more time training with you now too. So I know how good you feel. Uh huh. And so it's like, like when she threw you, I was like, definitely like, Annoying. A little like, yeah, annoyed. I was like, that never happens to Caitlin. Like, yes. what the fuck is happening? <laughs> but like, I knew, I knew you'd like stay calm and composed down there, and you hit like two beautiful sweeps while you were down there. But I had no idea like what takedowns counted for. In they, the no UFC. one really does. No one really yeah. does. There's no answer. Yeah. And I was like texting like Jason about it. I was like, like what really matters? And when he was like, oh, like significant strikes like on the feet. I was like, oh, Kalen's got this in the back. Yeah, but you don't know that. Well, yeah, so you're like kind of a good person to watch it because you're a novice like but fight I am, fan. Yeah. But I so almost think he's so good at jiu By watching, what did, who did you think? Were you confident at the judges' scorecards? I was confident that like if they were judging like an eye test fight, like Caitlin would definitely win it. Yeah. But I'm like, I also have no idea like how takedowns are scored. So like right. if it did come down to that, like I was like, oh, I could be iffy here. Yeah. Yeah, I you know you shouldn't do this, but I read a lot of the comments. Kyle, and reads there's a lot of so people that comments. you know a lot of obviously she has 1.8 million followers on Instagram, so yeah. she's very popular. So a lot of the fighters were like robbery, robbery, and then but there was plenty that had a perfectly like logical explanation. They're like, what are you talking about? It was, you know, it wasn't even close. Like yeah. she dominated on her feet. Uh, she landed all the power, you know, all the volume. She just got taken down a couple of times. Then like, some, it's not a close fight. I heard a couple of people like, well, control time. <laughs> it was like, well, then she had four minutes of control time, but it's I have 11, 11 minutes. minutes of me dominating. So, OK, if that's right. you know, it really bothered me during the fight. I know nothing about fighting, but like at one point, like she was like you were like you had your back to like like the wall, like the cage. And she's like walking towards you. And like the announcers are like. Oh, Amanda Rebos, like controlling the center. And each time you would go to like walk towards her, she did that like I don't want to be mean because she was very nice to you on social media. Yeah. Well, like you know what I'm talking about. Like you would like this? go towards her. She'd be like, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah, literally yeah. a picture. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what's going on? Like, do you yes. want to fight her or not? It's so funny because Well, she 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 um part of her I guess charm or personality is she's like like bubbly a, like yeah like a character yeah she's you know yeah enthusiastic I'm, with her movements and and just like bubbly and like loud but and it, it wasn't even like fun to watch it was just like why aren't you doing that like i'm like caitlin like punch her in the face when she like walks back towards yeah. you after that yeah it's funny because when i first got the fight booked with her and watched it i remember the first like two days I, our first two sparring sessions with Sarge. Sarge did that, mm. and at the first time we she did it, I was like, "Wait, what's wrong?" And she's like, well, "No, I was trying to be like Amanda." I was like, "Oh, okay, you know what I mean?" Because I was like, "Oh yeah, she does do that." But um, you know what was weird is that uh, usually people lie about their height, like they say they're taller, but on what the, the thing they, 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 I was like, "Oh, she's five three. I was like, "You're gonna fucking be so much taller." She's like five six. She was like five, uh, like two inches shorter than me. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, she was taller than most girls. It wasn't like height. she said she was her thing says five three and she was five four. She no, was like, she was five, like five six. six. Five, seven. I was like, what the hell? I thought that was weird. <laughs> yeah. Um. But right before I walked out, this is like kind of like a really like intense thing. Zania like this. He um right before like they played my song and I walked out. I'm like waiting at the one spot, and so we're kind of like can see her walking out. You know, she's clapping and doing all that. And I like look at Kyle. Like a theme. You know? Yeah. And I look at Kyle and he goes, dead serious. Or like, so, and I usually don't like get pumped up from things that people say. Cause I'm like, whatever, I'm going to do a fight anyway, no matter what you say. But Kyle's like, she's a character. She's just a character. You're a competitor. 
I was like, damn, daddy. Okay. <laughs> and I, I mean, I didn't mean anything negative about that, but I do, that's how I sort of perceived her. But now I think of her as more yeah. of a competitor. She, she's she's there to scrap. She was definitely but I more... just felt that she's like, she's happy to be there. Yeah. Where Caitlin's not happy to be there. Caitlin's there to win and well, nothing else. Perfect example is you know, like. She's not happy to be in perf- the lineup. You know, a perfect. Uh, but, and, and I don't think Amanda is either. I think she's there to win, too. But that yeah. was just my perception of it. And that's why I said that. Yeah. But it like pumped me up because I was like, hell yeah, that's right. <laughs> but it, the you know, I think there are some truth to that because just I mean, everyone handles it differently. But like, you know. She lost and she was like all smiling and happy. Like mm. if I would have got that loss, I'm not smiling. I'm not happy. Mm mm. Like, no matter what, no. you know what I mean? Like some people and there's a lot of fighters and then you see that it's just it's like, I mean, maybe show, man. they're like, oh, yeah, good show. Got fight. I don't care. Like if You'd I rather get the worst fight booed off the stage for the most boring fight ever. But when yes, then get fight of the night, greatest fight ever. Everyone think I'm a legend and lose. and lose. If everyone like, wow, you're such a legend. That was amazing. And I no. lost. No. no, like I'd rather you think I'm like so boring and win because that's all that i care about that's it yeah that's that's if you didn't think like that i we would probably butt heads <laughs> yeah like if you just wanted to slug it out yeah no <laughs> but uh yeah and then it's funny because like i didn't really know but everyone's like oh maybe you'll get fight of the night fight of the night and i was like i don't know i thought you would i was like i don't know but then it's like everyone kept saying it so it's funny then watching the rest of the card when you think you're getting fight of the night and just praying that every fight is so boring so like we're watching i'm like i hope this fight sucks it's the only time like ever you're like i hope this fight is terrible i hope it's not good yeah but uh but yeah so this is my first bonus yeah that was awesome Mm -hmm. then we did the media then we went out and uh it's always fun it's just fun going out like with when your hair is still in the braids and <laughs> yeah. your face is a little cut it's the up. best because it's like i can go out to like a vegas club and like sneakers and jeans and oh, like yeah, yeah. not have any makeup on and i have an excuse so it's uh-huh. like oh this is awesome but we went out with uh i, I reunited with my stockton buddies yeah from the jake paul fight all the guys that are at the jake paul fight mm-hmm. the nate diaz crew yep was all out so we went out with uh that whole crew Jake Shields and Nate and all the Stockton guys. Yeah. But they, it was just crazy because how deep they roll. There's it's, like 25 people and they don't want to split up. They're like, no, we'll all take the same bus to the, like another bar. And we're like, we'll never fit. And they're like, we always fit. <laughs> there's, there's like, like 25 there's people. There's 25 people. Like they're like, we're bus. walking out of the casino. They're like, we're going to go to this club at this other one. I'm like, oh, like it seems so far. And they're like, no, we're going to get a bus. We'll just take us. I'm like, they're, we're not going to all fit in the bus. They're like, we always all fit. Then I'm we like, get off oh. the bus and I realized, I was like, wait, who the fuck paid for that? Yeah, I have <laughs> no idea. We just like, got off. But yeah. yeah, I felt like the bus. Like 25, 30 people on this bus. It was like a 15 passenger bus. Yeah. It was so packed. People music, sitting on laps. Music like blasting. Everyone's like smoking. I was like, I thought the, the bus ride to was, so fun. was like more fun than the club. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was definitely fun. The only problem was then it was like so late. We couldn't, I was like, we were in the club. I was like, all right, I'm not trying to be a, like a party pooper, but like I haven't eaten since the fight. I'm like, I'm starving. And like, I can't drink. Like right. I had like a glass of champagne and someone tried to like Nate Diaz tried to give me a shot and I couldn't do that. I was like, no, like, thank you. But like, I, no, I physically can't do it. Like, I just can't. It was like some dark yeah, yeah, stuff. I saw that. I it was like, like a warm tequila. It was, I was like, no, sorry. I was like, I'm struggling to drink this glass of champagne. But um, but yeah, that was funny. And then. Yeah, then we stayed an extra day. We went, we did a pool party. That was fun. Yeah. Kyle was like the superstar at the pool party. It was a pool party at what was it? Which one? Wet Republic. Wet Wet Republic was it? No, it was not Wet Republic. Oh no, no. it, it Encore. was uh, Encore Beach Club. Yeah, but uh, there was uh, the DJ uh, David Guetta. David Guetta. <laughs> <laughs> David Guetta just bumping it, mm-hmm. and I loved it. So good, and everyone was just going crazy. Yeah, so so many people were hitting on Kyle, and Kyle's like, "Did you hear that? It was wild. Did man. you see that?" I'm like, "Yes, Kyle." I didn't say that. We <laughs> saw it, but like, I was, gr- like g- getting grabbed. G- girls were grabbing yeah. Kyle. Yeah. 
And guys were hitting on guys him too. too. Guys and girls going nuts. The guy came right up to me and was like, you're a beauty. Kyle's like, what? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Say th thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Girls asking me if you're single. Yeah. Are you single? <laughs> Can Are you go here with anyone? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> kind of. So no, I'm not single. <laughs> <laughs> but they like Kyle was a showstopper at this po pool party. Yeah, I don't know why, but I I kind of was. Yeah. I think because I went tanning before. Yeah, and you were so lean from the weight I cut. I was lean from the weight cut, too, I think. I think yeah. that was big. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. That I want to go to more pool parties with you. <laughs> <laughs> as long as David got his spinning. Yeah, you feel like you didn't even know. It took you, you didn't even know. I thought it was just like a radio on. They're like a s speakers. <laughs> Yeah, so I like that song. Like every screen says David Guetta. I didn't know it was like a big thing. And you're like, I what is it... that? I'm like, no, that's David Guetta. Like that's him right there. You're like, oh. I thought it was just like like the music, like at a you know, like at a bar, like a playlist. Yeah, yeah. this is a good playlist. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know, you know. Yeah, but we had backstage passes to it. Dope. Yeah. yeah, it was dope. Oh, and the night the night before the club we were at, it was uh the Chainsmokers. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you even cool know that? Too. No, I do that. Yeah. Are you yeah. sure? I did know that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then what else did we do? We went um, after the pool party. We went showered. Then we went out to a, an amazing restaurant. Yeah. We took a little was, nappy uh, poo. Jose Andres. Mm -hmm. Jose Andres, the chef from Bazaar. His new <laughs> restaurant is a, like a Spanish tapas. Boy, it was that was good, really man. special because we, we almost it. like weren't even all new different stuff, which I love. We I don't like going to like a place where like a steakhouse. It's like, you know, I eat steak every day and steakhouse, even the best steakhouse doesn't really like blow me away. Yeah, it's this, good. This but, blew me away. Yeah, I like to go to when you go out to eat, if, especially if it's like a nice restaurant, kind of like stuff that you can't make. Right. Or, you know, or different things. But um, it, it was really good. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. And then we just like sat at a lounge and where it was like we're, people, people we just watched. people watched. We just had coffees and then sat there and like people watch coming in and out. And Vegas is so crazy. Yeah, there's like any time of day there's people coming in from a party, leaving to a party. Like it's just all oh my God, how about that guy that broke his nose? Oh my god, that was crazy. So we were this was the night of the fight. We're sitting at a bar and all of a sudden we hear smack. I saw it happen. I saw I yeah. saw it happen. I saw like him the second half of it it sounded like a baseball bat broken half this like like older guy was just standing fat. yeah fat older guy was just standing there like wasted and just tipped straight over face down and his face went right smack in his face blood everywhere his nose was busted yeah like, they had carry, like he was sitting there he was like so drunk he wasn't even like ah he was just like yeah. out of it and definitely his, like surgery like full facial surgery his nose was like out there was blood everywhere so much blood. they had people come and taking pictures i was like oh my but that stuff probably happens all the time there like yeah probably yeah so crazy yeah then uh the ride home at the airport it's kind of funny. We were sitting eating a little breakfast. And there oh, was at like the this airport. really obnoxious couple next to us. And they were like talking to the couple next to them. And this is something that is really annoying to me that happens at airports. This is like a real pet peeve of mine is that airports are the only place where people, they, they really treat you differently. They, I think they have a sense of camaraderie. Like we're all doing the same thing. We're all traveling somewhere. And, just because they're going on vacation, maybe they perceive us as all going on vacation. Where some people are traveling for a funeral, right? They're not necessarily going to something fun. But people on an airplane think that there's this shared moment. So they're quick to, so quick to talk to you like, oh, where are you headed? What, what do you do? How long are you in town for? And like asking like all kinds of like personal questions. Like at a restaurant, you're a couple sitting at a table next to you is not like. So these people were like talking loud enough for so we would get involved, you know, when people like bait you into a conversation, but me and Caitlin would never fall for that. We just stare straight ahead. Yeah. Then finally they started asking us direct questions and well, you had they the look, UFC bag. Oh yeah. They're like, Oh, were there fights in town? Like, yeah. They're like, Oh, where? So the apex, what's that? 
like oh it's just a little arena They're like oh well did you fight i'm like no and then they ask Caitlin, did you fight she's like no we just watched <laughs> and like she's got like black eyes and her hair and like braids i was like <laughs> nah. really but the only reason i said that was because he was like super obnoxious the whole time like talking about how much money he spent on dinners and all this mm -hmm. and like if he was just like a nice person but like a total tool you could tell he wasn't like like a baller type of guy because no. people like that don't talk like yeah that. he was just kind of annoying and like we were like kind of tired i was just like not really trying to talk about my career with him yeah if he was like not douchey i would have right but yeah, I had a full black eye and he asked if I fought and I was like, no. He's like, oh, OK. Yeah. And then he's like, who is the main event? And, well, and then he said, if you don't watch MMA, you're not going to know Jan Blachowicz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you didn't know there was fight, he's like, oh, the fights at Mandalay Bay. Yeah. I was like, no, they haven't been there in like years. <laughs> yeah. Like Chuck Liddell fight. Yeah. So I don't know. But um, yeah. I've been, Zane, my ankles are, like, swollen. Like, look for my sock. From what? Since my fight, my hands and my feet have been so swollen, I can't walk. It's, like, insane. I think it's from, like, food. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I didn't eat that much today because I couldn't. Right. And I'm just, like, swollen. How's your stomach feel now? My stomach feels fine, but I'm just, like, swollen everywhere. Yeah. I can't really eat that much because I'm, like, don't... Like if I I don't have like an appetite type of thing. Yeah, that sucks. I have like insane ear indigestion, and heartburn, and my feet are swelling. It takes a lot out of her. Yeah. Yeah, and you do that. You did that like before this year too. So that's like yeah, did yeah. Something happened then, or a little, not this bad. Right. Yeah. But what are you gonna do? Maybe I'll go to hot yoga tomorrow. To sweat it out. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that's our weekend recap. What else? What do you got to? Um, fight of the night. Zane watch Pablo. Zane watch Pablo. Oh, I always watch Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> I worry about you guys. Anything else? Yeah, Pablo? Yeah. No, I just know the whole time I was like, oh, Pablo's just having fun. He's just eating puppuccinos with Zane all day. Yeah, we really appreciate that. He Zane. just. He just gives me anxiety sometimes. Why? Well, I told you guys before when he like got up in the middle of the night and he like went to your room. Aww. Lately, he has been like a restless sleeper. Yeah. Yeah. Like the entire time, like he's at the edge of the bed, he's like licking his paw. I'm like, Pablo, <laughs> like, can we just sleep, bro? He gets that from you, a restless sleeping. Yeah, probably. And then he turns around and he'll just like look at me for like 10 <laughs> seconds. I'm like, oh, what's up, buddy? Like, you need, need something from me? He just turns around, just lays back down, licks his paw again. <laughs> and it's like a cycle for like 20 to 30 minutes. Like every 20 to 30 minutes, they'll just do that again. Oh, boy. Like I think, I think I think he's just testing you. He knows he can like pick on you. Yeah. I mean, that's my boy. Like, I'm not going to. Yeah. He's family. Yeah. So, Zane, you have a you have a competition this weekend? Yeah, I have a no time limit sub only match. Let's fucking go. Let's, Let's fucking go. go. Are you going to burn the boats? If I have to. Yeah. If I have to. At one point in my fight, I was just like punching and I was like, I have to do this for Kyle and Pablo. <laughs> I swear to God, I thought that. Really? I was like, I have to do this for my boys. Ah! <laughs> That's so the last minute is what that felt like. Yeah. Like you were just fucking slugging. Oh, that was so annoying because I was like, a minute? Like. Full sprint. Ugh. I just didn't know she was going to be like that game. I was like, can you just like do less? Then um, after the fight, there was, we didn't talk about that. Like there's like a lot of call outs, but it was weird because only one of them really stuck because I think you said that French chick, she can get it. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone just loved that. That was like really cool. Yeah. Oh, that reminded me of one other thing I want to talk about. <laughs> but um. That French chick, she could get it. Then after the fight, it was almost felt like, oh, yeah, Caitlin's fighting uh, Faro in France I've, on September 3rd. I'm like, wait, what? I've seen things that are like she <laughs> it got. It says matchup made. I've seen things today online that, that she got a contract sent to her already for fighting me September 3rd. I was like, wait, 
No, it didn't happen. Right. Like, I mean, I mean, you, you'd probably want to fight her, but not necessarily September 3rd. Yeah. And in, in France, like right. I'm the number one contender. Why do I have to go there? Yeah. But I get it because it's there and she they want to put the like French people on November MSG makes more sense to me. But yeah, but either way, it was pretty. uh um, Pretty good comment that you said, though. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was it was a big controversy from the weekend was uh, what's his name? Tony Kelly. Mm, yeah, yeah. Andrea Lee's coach. Yeah, her boyfriend. So did you hear about this saying? So this guy, he's actually a UFC fighter. He's definitely really good, too. Um, his name's Tony Kelly. He also coaches his girlfriend, Andrea Lee, who fought. And uh, she was fighting Viviana Ruzhev. And uh, I guess she got poked in the eye at one point. And he said something, I'm paraphrasing, along the in lines the corner. of, that's what these dirty Brazilians do. They're going to fight dirty. Cheating dirty cheating. Brazilians. So that's what he said. So obviously that got picked up, like soundbite, and like kind of <laughs> went viral. And everyone's like saying well, he's racist. And, and he this. released a statement basically saying like, fuck cancel culture. I said what yeah. I said in the heat of mo. He didn't apologize. He didn't. And... um. And I'm not saying that it's wrong to call him. He, he very well may be. Who knows what, how he thinks. I just don't get it how come people don't really say that. Why didn't people say that about the stuff that Chow Sonnen has said? Way worse mm -hmm. stuff about Brazilians. Or like Conor McGregor. Colby, McGre Colby has sent way more stuff. I saw he calls last, him like filthy animal. I saw last week Conor McGregor told... Um, Charles Oliveri to go back to your favela. Mm -hmm. Like that's an insult, that's, right? Yeah. So it just seems weird to me that like certain people, if you have some status or you're at a certain level, then you're always just talking trash. Yeah, yeah. But this guy's like, you know, like a fall a fighter on the UFC roster with no following, and he's like. You know, a white guy from Louisiana. Mm -hmm. So you're like, he's racist. And they know but Conor her. McGregor. I've heard him say like the worst things. And I think the thing too, they know her history, like her uh, yeah, her old true. boyfriend. I think it's a he really was definitely racist. Her though. old boyfriend, or I don't know if she was married to him. I think they might have. He been had married. like swastika tattoos. Yeah, he had like the Nazi tattoos on his arm and stuff. And then she had made a statement when it became noticed, like people talked about it she was saying that like oh he got that when he was in jail and he shouldn't have to cut and they were like well why don't you cover it up or get it removed and she's like oh well if it's she kind of defended him like he shouldn't have to cover it up because it's something that happened in his past life mm -hmm. and he's even though he's changed or whatever so you definitely i need to be covering that up <laughs> yeah for sure um especially when you're like yeah not i was gonna say especially when you're covered in tats it's not a big deal but even if you're not like you're just really it's not, not that hard to cover it up you literally just make a little square but uh i think her having that history with that guy and then this that probably was why i brought a little bit more attention yeah and it's i'm okay with calling that guy racist and whatever he's a terrible person but it, i want it to be more all either Everyone can say whatever they want or no one can. Yeah, I agree. It can't with that. be like, and I love Conor McGregor and I love Chael Sonnen and I love Colby Covington, but what they say needs to be scrutinized just as much mm -hmm. as what this guy said. Just because he's like a, you know, much yeah. lower on the totem pole. Yeah. He, you know what I mean? He should. Well, and I think too. Like that was on ESPN, so I'm sure that. Well, so was all their everyone else's stuff. Bigger, yeah, well, Chael Sonnen's was a long time ago. Yeah, that was a long, and even Conor McGregor's was a different. Era. Well, Con Conor McGregor said last week about yeah, Charles Oliveri. But when he, I was saying when he was talking about like um Jose Aldo and mm -hmm. he would say all that stuff, that was definitely a, you know before the last couple of years. Yeah, but it's kind of reminded me of uh like how M Masvidal and Colby like. They're saying, oh, well, Masvidal should he should get prosecuted. He sucker punched mm -hmm. Colby this and that. But then when he fought um, Edwards, Leon Edwards, and just beat him up backstage, you know. Yeah, through, yeah. They thought it was the greatest thing ever. Three piece in a soda. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be all the same. It's yeah. got to be like. It never art. really is, though. 
it should be all the same. But some moments are bad, and then others are the same exact thing is good. That's the world today. Yeah, it's just some it's things are okay. Pu- it's okay for some people. It's not okay for other people. You know what I mean? That's I would imagine that the UFC is probably gonna stop miking coaches. I mean, I kind of think they should. It's a, it's a pretty intense moment, and I don't think I wouldn't want like the corner to like be nervous about what they're saying because of that because that's a very intimate moment and i've been like i could totally be understand like coaches being like fuck this bitch up and they're like that's rude don't call her that right but, like right. dude we're fighting well, like, there, there, there's or even beyond that like i would never say anything derogatory about anyone especially someone you're fighting but another thing that coaches get scrutinized is how they treat the actual fighter yeah that's like the, that's such Lad's a hot coaches, topic now aspen lads coaches are scrutinized but maybe she likes that maybe she likes to be mm-hmm. you know talk to you like that and that's how you get her going yeah you know so you don't know how people like yeah you, it, it, like what if like one thing that pump, pumped you i was like you fucking suck you're mm-hmm. embarrassing us go out there like if yeah, i said but that, what if that was like what, you what if you're like yeah, that more. I need, some yeah, people are some like people that. Some people do, yeah. So that's why I think maybe coaches shouldn't be mic'd. I, I agree with that. They, and more importantly, they shouldn't say something derogatory about anyone. But I think not being mic'd eliminates, you know, some problems. Yeah. Well, like I said, now it's that's like kind some of the, the hot topic now where like fans get to not only criticize the fighters, but they criticize the, the coaches, corner. the coaches, um, you know, advice, which is like, right. You don't, you have no idea what's going on. You have no idea. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I could see that happening. Just like how they, uh, they don't allow, um, no flags. Flags. Anymore. Yeah. They told us you know that, that saying? no flags, allowed. you know, like fighters carry out like their country flag. Now they changed it. We're not allowed to carry any flags. No flags, no matter what country. We're not allowed to. No Armenian flags. Not for weigh-ins, not for the fights, not for the walkout. Not okay. just Armenia, no any country. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Super weird. weird times, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so another win. I'm happy. Yeah, another win. Most important. Um, so that's four fight win streak. Plus first bonus. First bonus. Starting to feel like Gregor. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, one thing that was a big struggle was there's this last thing, and we'll wrap things up. But there was a, it was kind of like a theme of the whole fight week was there was this one company that wanted to sponsor Caitlin, and uh, they said that they were going to pay her good, is really good money, if she said afterwards. I want to give a shout out to such and such is the best place. It was like a long paragraph she had to say after she won. So for one, you had to win to get the, cause you don't get interviewed unless you win. So you definitely have to win. Then you have to remember this like long, complicated speech. So she was like getting stressed out about it. She's like, I don't want to have to worry about that. I'm like, don't worry about it. Then don't do it. Just say no. You they know, were like, we're we'll like, tell your coaches and they'll whisper it into your ear right before you. I'm like, do you? You've never fought before because you have no idea what like you're so, I don't want to have to worry about that. So she said, no, I'm not doing it. Then they came back. They upped what they were going to pay by a lot. Yeah. And said, all you have to say is, I just want to give a shout out to wh- whatever it was called on Instagram. And then uh, all she had to say was that I want to give a shout out to this on Instagram. So. And for more money, saying less. So then she's like, I kind of have to do it. Yeah. And she got but there was right no obligation. The they're like, they're like, say it if you don't. But if you don't say it, then you, you just, just don't, don't get, get paid. paid. So that yeah. kind of made I was like, all right, I'll try. I really will. If it's shorter, they, they shortened it up. And I still kind of, I said it, but I stumbled a little but bit. But you did it. Though. But then I they, did Then it. they had asked you to post something the next day for another thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. It was wild. But like all week, it was kind of like, she's like, oh, I just don't want to do well, it. Well, at first, and it was, a, it was. I think a lot of money. Yeah. And, but like when it comes to fighting, even if it's like a million dollars, if you feel that it's going to like 
stress you out. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just like, Ugh. they're like, and then I remember right before I was like, they shortened it. I was like, all right, I think I can do that. But if not, whatever. Yeah. And then like, then like Mark's trying to whisper to me. I was like, he's like, don't forget. I'm like, I know. <laughs> I was like, uh, and then I kind of like stumbled a little bit, but I got it. So they there were happy and, Killed it. and I'm happy. That was funny. So yeah, that was super funny. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Please uh, be sure to subscribe. Our subscriptions seem, or our subscribers are going up. So that makes me happy. Daddy's happy. Yeah. Um, um, good luck it. to Zane this weekend. Good luck, Zane. Woo! Um, <laughs> Back next week. Uh, I'd like to have a guest on next week, but we'll see. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. Bye.